Hello everybody. Well, I never imagined yesterday when I did the video on the transgender mess today, I anticipated that I would get a lot of feedback on it. Not all of it would be good as you can imagine. And one of my detractors said, well, you're just a bitter old tranny uh, who will never be a woman. And I said, uh, thought to myself, well, you're at least half right with that. I'll never be a woman. And at least you got that out of the uh, upload that I did yesterday. No, I'm not bitter. I'm actually pretty happy. And I think that there's a reason uh, for that. And I had a lot of questions and uh, emails and things from people that wanted me to drill down because I am one of the most long-standing trans uh, women here, and I don't say w woman, women here on trans women, here on YouTube and probably the most, most uploaded with about 12,000 uh, videos. So if you're not subscribed, please take a minute to subscribe and hit the bell for all notifications because this is infinitesimal fraction of what I do on the channel but I thought the time was ripe to address some of these concerns because it's uh, I think it's it's very critical to society because I often worry when things are too easy to do the long-term implications of potential problems can be uh, severe and I think nowhere is that more apropos than the case of being uh, transgendered and the sort of dropping of barriers and dropping of what I call roadblocks and gateways that allowed a more speeded up version of getting the results, right? Getting what you want out of the process quicker. Isn't that what we want everywhere? We want quicker, faster internet speeds. We want to be able to have Instapots that cook our food faster. We want faster cars, right? I mean, it's just the need for speed is often, often um, a great contributor to uh, sadness and despair, which is the ultimate terrible end of uh, a transgender journey gone wrong. And I think that despair is one of the worst holes that people can be in. And I think too often with what happened over the last 10 years in particular with the lowering of barriers of entry to having actual therapies that were going to physically change you, those barriers drop so low in response to demand as this chart shows, the overwhelming number of people, uh, especially uh, women three times, girls three times, the uh, number of boys that present as having gender identification issues, it is, a, it is a cause for concern. And some people took issue with the fact that, well, Rosie, you blame the uh, internet and social media. Well, it's very interesting if we look at the chart of the rise of internet access in the world, we see it almost perfectly correlates with a huge rise in the number of people that, uh, ident that have uh, gender identification issues. And to deny that is to not find a plausible explanation for how, how to explain it. How do you explain it except through, um, through the rise of social media? And when you start to put different studies together, and this is why liberal arts is such an important thing, and I think in education, it's great to be specialized as a... As a, as a uh, uh, what would you call it, a, uh, a nuclear scientist or a marine biologist, but knowing a, knowing a little bit of that, about a lot of the different things that allows you to connect things in the liberal arts tradition. And when you look at um, the most influenced groups, the groups most directly affected by messages of social media, particularly in women and girls, they tend to be like the 11 to 13 year old uh, age group. And we find a lot of 
cross-correlation that might explain why we have such a rapid rise of young people that identify as having gender issues, plus the normal amount of uh, peer pressures that need to belong. The need for peer acceptance is so critical in that age group where people start looking at people physically, looking at people beyond just a name and until a certain age, we don't even see faces on. That's a boy, it's a girl, right? I mean, but you reach a certain age and you start to make uh, evaluations of people. And evaluations can spread like wildfire from uh, child to child to child. And pretty soon, uh, a happy, well-adjusted child can find themselves on the road to feeling ostracized and feeling sad and wondering what bomb landed from outer space that suddenly made things so bad. And in so many cases, as I said yesterday, in the transgender community and so many trans women that I know have been so effective in those that want to transition and those uh, that have shared their stories with me have been so profoundly affected by psychological issues, so many of them growing up. And I often think this response of a gender change out is often like pushing a reset button that allows you to just clean the slate, start over, and start a whole new round of evaluation from ground zero. The problem is in the trans community, when we put ourselves into this new arena, especially male to female, I'm particularly talking about, we open ourselves up to the world that women have occupied for millennia here. And that is the woman's world is often a world where the first and long lasting judgments are on appearances. And so much as we know of advertising in the cosmetic industry wants to make us and make women in particular feel like if we just do X, Y, Z, you're going to achieve what you want. So it becomes very, uh, what I would call a very stepping stone, a very laddered approach, according to media. If you do this X, Y, Z, you buy this product, you buy that product, it's all going to be enhancing. It's all chasing, chasing the youth, right? Chasing the beauty. I have the latest cream. I just had the latest facial treatment that's going to put my look back uh, to, to I was age 25 and things like that. In other words, as male to females coming in male, we willingly step into a world that can be psychologically much more worse, and in many cases, much more wor wor worse in terms of evaluative appearance judgments than the world we left. I always joked that a guy could go on a date with a white t-shirt and a nice jeans and uh, maybe a, a jacket or flannel shirt. He's good to go. A woman has to sit there and primp forever. Oh my God, I look good. I got to have this. Would this make my ass look fat? Do these shoes make my feet look big? Are these high enough? Are they too low? <laughs> it's, uh, the path you go down can be even more psychologically debilitating. And my point is, if you come into this process because you have other psychological issues that may be at play, maybe it's chemical, chemically induced depression. Uh, maybe it's something in your life, unresolved um, relationship and conflict. Maybe you were abused as a child and sexual abuse is so much of a part of so much of the uh, programs I hear that just so profoundly affects some people's lives that they carry this mantle, this this iron weighted mantle into the future, seeking relief for how to escape this world and feel better about themselves, but unwittingly step into a world that can be even harsher. You see, when you look at the trans community on YouTube today. You don't, you see very, very few women above, say, 45, trans women above 45 years old that are up late, uploading, much less like me, uploading on a daily basis, 
good or bad, fugly, whatever, it's all out there. Bad wigs, uneven, crooked, eyeliner, whatever. But I can be happy in that world because I came to the process without that iron cape of horrors from before. It truly, my drive sprung from within. And I think when people step into this transgender world and they are carrying baggage from before, it can be, it can be a harsher world. So what we're exposed to in our transition, we see idolized versions of people that tend to put their baby picture and then they'll show their the four minutes of their transition to this beautiful gal. Right, over and over, my transit, my 20 year transition or whatever. And these, these trans women tend to be in their early 20s to early 30s, right? But where are the other ones? Where do the other ones go, right? Well, you start to populate this world and you come to realize that becoming a trans woman puts you in a realm where other women have had to deal with for years, whether they look great or not. Women don't have the ability to just hide out because, well, I, did, I don't make it as Miss America, or Miss California, Miss New York or whatever. But you know what? I get out there and live my life and I'm happy as hell, right? Because it's not all about the looks. It's about the quality of the person that I am. And my own sense of self makes me not give a wit and a hoot what others may think or not think about my physical appearance. But so much we know of society for women and especially the young uh, guys that come in and transition to uh, uh, trans women, they know it's going to be the perception of worth and perception of value in the community is going to be totally vested in the way that you look. And the better you look, the more traction you get, the bigger voice you get. And it's very rare when one will stop and reflect back and say, well, this might not be a good path. Well, it was a good path for you, but it may not be for others because in, in essence, and in my opinion, if you're dragging these chains of psychological issues into the world of transgender, in the belief that hitting a reset button will somehow magically transform your life and transform you into somebody that you don't even recognize from your former self, you're apt to be disappointed. I use the issues of Jazz Jennings, who at 11 years old hit the scene and uh, declared uh, transgender and uh, went through, got a lot of the spotlight and the issues and it, it came down, gee, if I could only, if it all, if I can only live this way, I would be so happy in life. And we're seeing now years later as things play out that that's not the way it works, right? If you go into being transgender, not because it's driven from within, but because you think it might be a panacea to solve your issues of, of lack of happiness, or because of peer pressure from others, or because of influence from social media, yeah, this looks cool, wow, I know you like to experience both genders, hey mom, sign me up. you're probably not going to be down a road of happiness. And I would tell you, this is a real reason why we see a lack of representation amongst older trans women. And to some extent, older women in, in general that don't really have a really strongly grounded sense of self or else they're bitterly and, and desperately clawing on to whatever remnants of youth and beauty they have. 
thereby sort of becoming caricatures and uh, cartoon-like figures. But the problem is this psychological aspect of transgenderism and the importance of examining a life and really digging into someone's past and not immediately hopping to some pharmacological solution for what you claim is going to make you happy. Well, I have a responsibility as a higher order therapist and a duty to do no harm to my patients under the Hippocratic Oath. I have a more important duty to put myself at risk of your displeasure, your dislike of me, and tell you things and put roadblocks in your way that you may not like. But perhaps, and this is the part that few will stick around for, perhaps if we tear through this and take our time, you could potentially emerge as a happier person with real resolution of the heavy cast iron cape of misery that you carry around. But if we grab for this solution too quickly, God, if I'm wrong as your therapist and you're not forthcoming or you don't, we don't take enough time to get to know each other, I could put you down a darker path for future problems that might really have you spun and wound around the axle in a real world of shit. But somehow over the last 10 years, right, the expediency of the perceived solution because it puts a smile on your face, look mom, I got boobs, I'm happy. And you wake up and you realize not a hell of a lot's changed in your life. And I still got the little nagging, not even little, heavy cast iron cape of problems on my shoulders. Plus a whole new world of acceptance issues for who I am today. See, women can gravitate and move into this world of puberty and adulthood. And they kind of know through parents and grandparents and growing up because they go through the stages of uh, becoming a woman. And they got time to mentally adapt to the fact. And it's like women realize, hey, there's more to me. There's got to be more to me than the physicality of me. And they go out and they do other pursuits, they don't spend so much time on appearance. <clears throat> Maybe they get married. And by and large, most of them find happiness. I can't say the same about a lot of the trans population that I know. It's a continuous quest <clears throat> that now, unfortunately, is probably going to be made worse in the future because there's going to be legal entanglements now and lawsuits galore and things like that. So true genetically cisgendered women are naturally better equipped by virtue of the years that they put in on the rock pile <laughs> learning and adapting physically and mentally to what it is to be a woman with the capes that they carry around their back their own angst their own fears their own problems and by and large they make a go of but let's say we shortcut the process for a male to female, someone that claims male to female, that I'm transgendered. Hey, let's just skip to the good stuff. Let's get you like the looking that you best that you can and hope, fingers crossed, that this is going to make you a happier person. Psychological issues, psychological baggage is going to manifest itself one way or another. It's like a balloon full of water. Long balloon. If we squeeze it at end, one end, it bulges out the other. If we squeeze the other end, it bulges out this end. We take our psychological problem, we move it from this side, and now we've bulged it over to this side. Maybe we begin overeating. Maybe we begin over-medicating and drinking and drug use. Because we try to keep squeezing, hoping that the balloon just pops. But we know in life, it really doesn't. 
This failure to really understand is, of course, it's driven by the high volume. As you see, the explosive growth on the chart, especially if uh, girls that present themselves as uh, gender challenged and things. And we know it. I don't care what anybody says. We know it's because of social media and peer influence, right? Find me an alternative. Don't tell me it's just being better diagnosed. It's bullshit, okay? It's to say that we were ogres with our uh, knuckles scraping the ground years ago in the 80s and 90s. No, we had very competent people. <clears throat> it's just because of the numbers. We need to have the volume. We start to build an industry, what I call the trans-industrial complex. People depend on it. It's gender reassignment surgeries, hormone therapies, um, cosmetic surgery. Build up a whole... A whole new, whole new world of money-making adventure here. But what's lost in the sauce often is that journey that women take that few trans women will ever take, and even less today, of being trialed by fire to see if you got what it takes to live like this, and if you're going to be happy. So we're going to make you walk over hot coals. We're going to make you miserable. We're going to make you look like a fool with no hormones and out there dressed like a woman. Because, well, you know, a lot of women go out and look. They don't look like, uh, uh, you know, all the fashion, uh, all, all the fa high fashion models and things. And yet they still live their lives. And they're happy. I'll give you a little taste of that to see how it works out for you. Do I think that people, some measured people, are transgendered? Of course they are. But I think it's a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of people. And for all I know, it could be a mental issue. I'll own it. But as such, I still have to live my life. So I have some comfort knowing I've got kind of a clear past. Okay, so this is what I am. Go about things, I have counseling, I have therapies, and by and large, I'm pretty well adjusted and happy. It does not mean that I don't have doubts and worries about getting older, but what, what woman doesn't? Right. I'm with you guys, shoulder to shoulder. So there it is, guys. I hope you derive from that some benefit from this, and you will hit the subscribe button and the bell for all notifications. Obviously, I'm going to be talking more about these issues because they hit a timely note here at this day and age on the internet. And well, I got a mouthpiece on me. And I'm able to put a lot of things together from different areas and say, well, we can't deny this because look at this. Or did you ever consider this because of that? Our goal should be to help particularly young people become better citizens, better adapted, happier people in life. Not giving them a lollipop that's going to dissolve after a period of time and then they'll just be an empty stick. But things that are going to push them along and make them understand, honey, you're under the influence of this. Are you stronger than this or weaker than this? It's the way we talk and it's the way we express things. We can still express love and express support. And yet say, I cannot do this because I do not believe it's good for you in the long run. Well, more to say too about adults and late onset, what I call late onset transition and gender dysphoria because it's a whole nother kettle of fish but i'm so glad to have this platform on youtube and i do wish all of you a happy and healthy 2023 and this is something i hope as a society in the world that we get remoored and grounded and pull back from this nonsense and really understand that saying no sometimes no matter what backlash it might provoke, it might lead to more long-term happiness than just giving in to some short-term demand because of tantrums 
of something that might adversely affect someone's life for years. Thanks so much for watching everybody and thumbs up are appreciated. Of course, your comments are welcome down below. What do you think? Thanks everybody.